everyone, welcome to Mathflix with Sir Paul. Before you watch this episode, make sure na napanood mo na yung episode 1 wherein I talked about basics on circles. Just search for the hashtag Mathflix with Sir Paul S1E1. Sa last episode, natapos tayo sa pag-graph ng circle. Kaya alam na natin kung ano ang itsura ng circle. In this episode, we are going to look into the different side of a circle. A circle can actually be in the form of an equation. Dalawa ang pwedeng maging equation ng circle. The first one is in standard form. The second one is in general form. If you are going to ask me which one is more useful, I'd say it's the standard form. Mamaya malalaman nyo kung bakit. To be more organized with this lesson, I want to divide the discussion into three parts. First, variable representation. Second, paano mag-identify ng center at radius kapag binigyan tayo ng standard form. Third, paano naman mag-identify ng standard form given different situations. Una sa lahat, i-reveal muna natin kung ano ang itsura ng standard form. This is how the standard form looks like. The standard form of a circle is given by the equation x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. This may look complicated, pero madali lang ito. Mahalaga na alam natin kung ano yung nire-represent ng bawat variable. Ano yung nire-represent ng x, ng h, ng y, ng k, at ng r. To better understand the variable representation, I have here circle C. The center of circle C is given by the ordered pair HK. Ibig sabihin, in our standard form, HK represents the center. Now let's pick a point on the circle. Let's have point T. Point T is given by the ordered pair XY. Ibig sabihin, any points on the circle is given by the ordered pair XY. Now, let's connect the center to point T, forming the radius. In our standard form, the radius is represented by the variable R. Yan yung nire-represent ng ating variables. To better make sense of the standard form, let's have an actual example. This is a circle given by the equation x minus 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 16. Ang gusto natin gawin dito, Pigain natin ang standard form para makuha natin ang center at ang radius. For the center, we need h and k. Obviously, our h is 4 and our k is 5. Therefore, our center is at 4, 5. In our standard form, r squared is equal to 16. That is, r squared is equal to 16. To solve for r, we find the square root of both sides. The square root of r squared is r. And the square root of 16 is obviously 4. That means that given this standard form, the center is at 4, 5, and the radius is equal to 4. This is the reason why the standard form is more useful than the general form. The general form cannot directly give us the center and the radius. Para mas maintindihan pa natin, let's have another example. I have here a circle in standard form given by the equation x minus 6 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to 5. Again, we want to get the center and the length of the radius. Mapapansin nyo na hindi nagfa-follow sa format ng standard form ang ating example. In our second term, the operation is addition, when in fact, it should be subtraction. Kapag ganito ang case, medyo babaguhin natin ang ating equation para mag-pattern siya sa ating standard form. Kaya naman, ang ating equation ay magiging x minus 6 squared plus y minus negative 1 squared is equal to 5. Mapapansin nyo na ang operation na dito ay subtraction. But technically, wala talagang nagbago because we know that negative times negative is positive. From here, we can already get our center. The center is at 6, negative 1. In our standard form, r squared is equal to 5. To solve for r, we find the square root of both sides. The square root of r squared is r. Well, the square root of 5, hmm, 5 is not a perfect square, so our r is just square root of 5. If you input this in your calculator, square root of 5 is approximately 2.24. Gets na ba? Ganun lang kadali mag-identify ng center and radius kapag binigyan tayo ng standard form. Now, paano naman kapag mag identify tayo ng standard form given different situations? Tandaan nyo lang na ang kailangan natin sa standard form ay ang value ng h and k, which represents the center of our circle, and the value of r, which is the length of our radius. Let's have an example. 
Give the standard form of a circle, given that the center is at the origin and the radius is 3. When the center is at the origin, that means that the center is at 0, 0. In here, we already have the value of h, the value of k, and the value of r. The next step is to just substitute these values to our standard form. This will become x minus h, which is 0, squared, plus y minus k, which is 0, squared, equals r, which is 3, squared. Let's simplify each term. x minus 0 squared is x squared, plus y minus 0 squared is y squared, equals 3 squared is equal to 9. This is now our final answer. x squared plus y squared equals 9. Madali lang, di ba? Let's have another example. Let's give the standard form of a circle given that the center is at negative 5, 2 and the radius equals square root of 10. In here, we already have the values of h, k, and r. The next step is to just substitute these values to our standard form. This will become x minus h, which is negative 5, squared, plus y minus k, which is 2, squared, equals r, which is square root of 10, squared. Now, let's simplify each term. x minus negative 5 squared is equal to x plus 5 squared, plus y minus 2 squared equals square root of 10 squared is equal to 10. Now, this is our final answer. Madali na mag-identify ng standard form ng isang circle kapag meron na kagad values ng h, k, and r. Now, try naman nating sagutan ng isang mas challenging na problem. Give the standard form of a circle given that the center is at 3, negative 2, and the circle is tangent to the y-axis. Dito, binigay na sa atin ang values ng h and k. h equals 3, k is equal to negative 2. Ang problema na lang natin ay ang value ng r. Malalaman na natin ang value ng r kapag alam na natin kung ano ang ibig sabihin na ang isang circle ay tangent sa isang axis or sa isang line. Now, ang tanong, paano nga ba natin malalaman na ang isang circle ay tangent sa isang line? Ganito yan. Ang isang circle ay tangent sa isang line kapag ang circle na yon ay nag-intersect sa ating line at exactly one point. In this illustration, circle S intersected line CU at exactly one point and that point is point E. Now, let's combine that idea to our problem. To better visualize things, let's have a Cartesian plane. The center is at 3, negative 2. Let's plot our center first. Our x value is 3 and our y value is negative 2. Find the intersection. That is where point 3, negative 2 is located. Sabi sa ating problem, ang ating circle daw ay tangent to the y-axis. Ibig sabihin, ang ating circle will touch the y-axis at exactly one point. Ano ang itsura nito? This is actually how it looks like. See? Our circle intersected the y-axis at exactly one point. This means that our circle is tangent to the y-axis. Now, what do you think is the length of the radius? Dito, bibilangin na lang natin. Obviously, the value of r is 3. Now that we have the value of h, k, and r, we can substitute these values to our standard form. Substituting the values, we have x minus h, which is 3, squared, plus y minus k, which is negative 2, squared, equals r, which is 3, squared. Simplifying this further, we have x minus 3, squared, plus y plus 2, squared, is equal to 9. Now, this is our final answer. Ngayon naman, try natin ang isa pang mas challenging na problem. Give the standard form of a circle, that has a diameter with endpoints at negative 2, 3, and 4, negative 3. To better visualize things, let's have a Cartesian plane. First, let's plot the endpoints of our diameter. The first endpoint is at negative 2, 3. The value of x is negative 2, the value of y is 3. Find the intersection. That is where negative 2, 3 is located. Next, let's have the other endpoint. The value of x is 4, the value of y is negative 3. Find the intersection. That is where 4, negative 3 is located. Let's connect our two endpoints to form the diameter. 
In our previous episode, nalaman natin na ang diameter actually passes through the center, which means that the center is somewhere along the diameter. In fact, the center is at the midpoint of the diameter. Paano natin kukunin ang midpoint ng dalawang points na to? In this kind of scenario, wherein kailangan nating hanapin ng midpoint ng dalawang points, the midpoint formula will be particularly helpful. The midpoint formula is used if you want to find the midpoint of two points. Halimbawa, gusto nating malaman ng midpoint ng negative 2, 3 at 4, negative 3. The first thing that we want to do is to assign values. For our first ordered pair, we have x sub 1 and y sub 1. For our second ordered pair, we have x sub 2 and y sub 2. Now that we have assigned the values, let's substitute the values to our midpoint formula. Let's start with the x's. x sub 1, which is negative 2, plus x sub 2, which is 4, all over 2. Next, let's have the y's. y sub 1, which is 3, plus y sub 2, which is negative 3, all over 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. Next, we have 3 plus negative 3 is 0. 0 over 2 is 0. This means that the center is at 1, 0. To visualize it, let's plot the center at 1, 0. Our x is 1, our y is 0. Find the intersection. That is where 1, 0 is located. From here, we can actually already trace our circle. Ang kailangan na lang nating hanapin ay ang length ng radius. Now, paano natin mahanap ang length ng radius? Let's work on what we have. In this illustration, our center is at 1, 0, which means that the value of h is 1 and the value of k is 0. Also, the ordered pair 4, negative 3 is a point on the circle, which means that the value of x is 4 and the value of y is negative 3. These values can actually be substituted to our standard form to solve for r. Gawin natin yan. Substituting these values, we have x, which is 4, minus h, which is 1, squared, plus y, which is negative 3, minus k, which is 0, squared, equals r squared. Simplifying this, we have 4 minus 1 is 3 squared, plus negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3 squared, equals r squared. Simplifying this further, we have 3 squared equals 9, plus negative 3 squared is also 9, equals r squared. 9 plus 9 equals 18, so 18 is equal to r squared. Hindi na natin kailangang hanapin ang square root ng both sides, kasi sa standard form, meron na tayong r squared. There, we have the center at 1, 0, and 18 is equal to r squared. Let's substitute these values to our standard form. This will become x minus h, which is 1, squared, plus y minus k, which is 0, squared, equals r squared, which is already 18. Simplifying this further, we have x minus 1 squared plus y minus 0 squared is equal to y squared equals 18. Now, this is our final answer. In our next episode, pag-uusapan naman natin ng general form. If you learned something from this video, do not forget to share this to your friends and your classmates. Also, comment down below kung ano pa yung mga math topics na gusto nyo i-discuss natin sa ating mga series. I know that online class has been very challenging to some of our students and also our teachers, but I believe that as we work together, we can survive through this. Again, I am Sir Paul and this has been Mathlix with Sir Paul. Thank you for watching.